This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org. Welcome to another edition of Maui Causes. Eternal thanks to Akaku for giving us the opportunity as a community to share information that you're not likely to hear about in the other media channels here in Maui County. The Maui News tends to uh, uh, present information that is skewed towards the interests of established big business. That's kind of how everything is skewed here in Maui County. You know, those folks coming into Maui uh, thinking that Maui and Hawaii is just like any other place in the United States, well, they have a rude awakening if they're here long enough, if Maui allows them to stay long enough to find out what's really going on here. Because what's really going on here is a level of corruption that is completely out of bounds and completely outrageous. Every aspect of this economy and this society is exploited by business interests, established business interests that have been around, you know, since the plantation days. It's part of the whole same system that took the power away from the Hawaiian culture and has dominated this culture ever since. So if you're moving here from the mainland, that's what you're moving into. You're moving into an oppressed society. And unless you push back, then you will become part of the oppressed. If you're satisfied with that, then don't vote. If that pisses you off, then vote. It's really that simple. Our voter turnout is atrociously low, which allows the status quo to continue. Now, several years ago, we started a movement here in Maui County around the GM moratorium. Around, and it wasn't so much, I was very involved in that. I was the media director for the Shaka movement. And uh, the reason I got involved in it was more for the issues around pesticide use, the ancillary pesticide use that goes along with GM crops and genetic crop experimentation, open field experimentation. Um, those were reasonable questions in a, a, in a manipulated society. It was absolutely reasonable, and still is today, for the community to wonder whether the corporations that, that uh, have access to our lands um, with relatively no oversight, whether they're really doing it in a way that is safe for the community, that it doesn't expose the community to unnecessary risks. It's always going to be some risks, nothing's 100% safe, but they don't do any safety testing that is really worth uh, uh, trusting. And so we asked that question. As a community, we rose up. For the first time ever, Maui County citizens got enough petition signatures to put a petition on the ballot, a law on the ballot. The county council didn't approve it. You approved it as citizens. And it went to your vote, and you voted for it. Monsanto, with their very powerful lawyers, shut the whole thing down. They manipulated it at the court level. They manipulated it at the county administration level. Uh, and all of that worked to take power away from you and your vote. You as citizens were disempowered by the existing system. But it illuminated an entire community. We created something called the H factor. It never existed before here. We brought together three principal communities, the hippies, the Howleys and the Hawaiians all came together because they all understood everything that I've been talking about. The oppression, the manipulations, the corruption, and the financial exploitation at the benefit of the people and the environment. The Shaka movement was predicated on the public trust doctrine uniquely in the state of Hawaii. 
the elders understood the value of the environment and that outside business interests would come and exploit that. And so they wrote in, specifically into the Hawaii State Constitution, a protection, an empowerment of the community to protect the environment in all its aspects, water, land, uh, uh, air, the oceans, everything is protected by the citizens' responsibility to protect those assets for future generations. That is the public trust doctrine. And it's funny, you know, we had a meeting here of, of, of state senators who came to talk story with the community. And when asked, there's a panel of these, of, of, of these you know, luminaries, uh, of elected officials who the community has empowered to, to act on their behalf. And we asked the panel what their perceptions of the public trust doctrine was, why it exists, and what does it do? And the only thing that they could come up with was that the public trust doctrine, oh, that's what allows like everybody to get to the beach, right? That's where people, you know, can't, you know, encroach and, and ha you know, claim ownership of, of the beaches. They had no idea. It was an embarrassment. State senators who had no idea that the public trust doctrine protects all of the natural resources for the benefit of future generations. So we lit a fire in 2014 and that brought forth new candidates because the people stepped forward and took action and voted in 2014. More candidates who also shared those beliefs stepped forward in 2016 to try and take back Maui County from these exploitative business practices. And some of them got elected. Not enough. It wasn't enough. We were really close. We could have done it had everybody uh, uh, filled in all of the nine boxes. You know, when you vote for a Maui, when you go to the polls, first, go to the polls. There is no question. You have an opportunity this election to take these, uh, this island back. All of Lanai, Molokai, and Maui together, we have the opportunity to take these islands back from these exploitative business practices. We have the opportunity to turn this entire thing around. If we can get enough Maui council members elected, we only had four this past two years who had any sense of, of the common good. All the other council members really, really, really are protecting the status quo. They're protecting those business interests. Oh, they say, you know, it's a lot better than it was 20 years ago. Yeah, but it still is wrong. It's still being done in an exploitative way that you and your children don't deserve. It still needs to be changed. Just because it's, it's less exploitative than it was 20 years ago, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. And we have the power, we have the opportunity. Because now, in 2018, even more qualified individuals are putting their necks on the block for you and they deserve your support. Your children deserve you supporting these candidates who are dedicated to, to balancing our system so that, it's, that it is, is sustainable, that it is not exploitative exclusively to the benefit of, of moneyed interests, where all of the resources, all of the profits, are exploited and taken off the island. We have systemic problems. The structure of our government is flawed. The structure of our government is designed to protect the business interests that created it. And we have an opportunity to dismantle that. If we can get enough county council members, elected who share 
this notion of balance, if we can get a mayor elected who shares this notion of balance, and if we can get House and Senate members elected who share this understanding of the necessary balance to reach sustainable quality, sustainable lifestyle, sustainable business, so that Maui, for instance, doesn't turn into Oahu. If you think that Maui deserves to be built out 100%, that every aspect of Maui should be developed because, after all, that's what business wants, business benefits. If Maui is, is, is 100% built out, every little community, every little open space filled with a little mini mall, if that's the Maui that you want to live in, a Maui that completely disrespects the carrying capacity of the physical island that we live in, there are limits, there's practical limits to this physical space of living on an island. And if you think that building Maui out completely is, gonna, is, is not going to destroy the reefs, is not going to destroy the tourist industry because it will just be overpopulated. If you think that's not gonna happen, then, then don't vote. If you think that there's a chance that that's what we're headed to, vote, vote. Vote for your children, vote your, like your life depends on it because the quality of your life does depend on it. And if we don't do this now, I don't know that there's, that there's coming back from, from more exploitation because the decisions that are made over the next couple of years will reverberate for the next 10 or 20. And we have the opportunity because the people, the individuals, the candidates, they're willing, to, again, to put their necks on the block. This is not, trust me, I, I, you know, as a community activist, it's not always comfortable. People don't like what is expressed here on this show because it threatens their livelihood. People don't realize that their own personal livelihood is very often connected directly to the exploitations that we're talking about. Maybe it's indirectly, but it's still coming from that exploitative model. So it's very difficult in a community, especially in a, in a small community, you know, to not to do this kind of work and not piss some people off. And forever, I apologize to the, the status quo, but we are here to be a positive disruption. That's a necessary tool in a free democracy. That's what this show is dedicated for, and that's why we bring candidates on the show who we believe that will be working in your best interest when you elect them to the seats that they are running for. And then with that, I'd like to welcome onto the show Michael Tengan, uh, who is running for State Senate District 7. Indeed, yep. And let me, let me look at your neck, because yep. it's going on the block, pal. <laughs> and I, <laughs> Don't I know it. And, and, I know and, it. A, and a, a double, double thank you for, for, for doing it, to stepping up and, and being willing to, to play that role in this community. So very necessary to bring fresh blood uh, and, and new ideas and a, and a different perspective into our process. Well, thank you for all that you do and really offering this as a platform for you know, people like me who are coming in and transitioning into the realm of politics to be advocates for the community, to be able to speak on behalf of uh, ourselves, our own beliefs, and then also what the community is communicating through us. This is your first time running for office. It absolutely is, yeah. Yes, it is. Why are you doing it? Well, you know, I, um, so I, I was raised on Maui and I did what many boys turning into men uh, from Maui do, and I, I left. Ah. And I went away for education, I went away for career, for life. And this was back in 1995. And so I had always come back to Maui because Maui is, has always been home, you know, for generations back. And so when I then finally had my own ohana, you know, married and now with two children, uh, we moved back to Maui in 2016. 
and the Maui that I had left in 1995 and the Maui that I had come back to in 2016 were vastly different. Um, there was How so? Well, uh, you know, more superficially, there was a lot of development that had happened. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in Waiehu, and in the back of Waiehu are like the sand dunes and the macnut fields, and I had never thought that anything would ever be back there. Right. Now there's, I mean, the, the, this huge, complex, elaborate, multi-million dollar property is there, as well as these other homes, and they're not very, just they're very clever, the developers, uh, in, uh, in, in in taking a region that yeah. they can get their claws on, yeah. and finding some way to develop that. Yes, out. yes, and so I mean, these are magnet fields, so this was a designated agricultural plot at right. some point, right? And so that's part of the reason I never thought ever that there would be something in terms of an actual residential development. And Clever is right because as you're driving down, the, the, the larger macnut trees are still there, so it, it's, it's blocked. Uh -huh. And so I hadn't seen it initially, but then driving back from, uh, so I grew up in Waiehu, between Waiehu, Piihana, and Happy Valley, that's where my grandparents uh, had lived, as well as Kula. Uh -huh. And so I was coming back one day and I had seen, uh, you know, all of a sudden I just opened up into this, this property and, you know, as beautiful as it was, it was completely out of place. And in looking at what was there, not just localized to this one spot, starting to drive around and get reacquainted, now planting my roots in 2016 and seeing what has happened on Maui. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember going to an event and uh, coming up there and looking for some friends who I thought surely would be at this event. Uh, nothing was there. No one was there. The only local people that I had really seen were either working, you know, at the restaurants or, or sweeping up or at the parking. And recognizing that the very face of Maui had changed. And so I think that's another piece of it. Um, there had always been a lot of visitors coming to Maui, but the transient population had drastically in increased. And noticing that there is, in reaching out to friends then who do live here, you talk a, a lot about that, that concept of what people have, you know, the perception of paradise is absolutely BS. You know, the, the cost of living here in relationship to property taxes, in relationship to what wages are actually being paid for our local population, mm -hmm. um, has been highly conducive to a lot of the friends that I've grown up with leaving the islands, right. as I did, right. you know? No, it forces it, you. It, it does. It's, it, 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 conducive is a, is, is a gentle, it is, nice, it is, that's a nice it word, is, yeah. you know, conducive, oh, that's a good thing. Right. No, no, no. True, true, this is, true. This is, this is it, it, uh, you know, this is a disaster for, fa yeah. for families. This yeah. is a total destruction of, yeah. of families. And I really started to see more and more of it where these multi-million dollar homes built adjacent to long-term multi-generational families' homes right. um, steadily began to oust people. Right. And so coming back to the question of ter in terms of why am I running, um, I tend to see things from the big picture and then long-term. Mm -hmm. And so just seeing the trajectory of where we're going right now, if nothing happens now, again, children, that's a huge part for me, my, mm -hmm. my children, their children and the capacity for them to live here on Maui, a life that allows them to thrive rather mm -hmm. than survive. What mm -hmm. I see right now is, as you mentioned, you know, not as bad as 20 years ago, not a whole lot has happened since, you know, thinking about grandpa's old days in the plantation fields, not a whole lot has happened in terms of the everyday person's quality of life and the capacity to thrive as we continue to merely survive. Well, it's, it, it, it hasn't been enhanced, mm -hmm. <laughs> to, no. you know, to use, to use the plus side, right. it hasn't been enhanced, right. it's, made, it's been made harder. Yes. And that's, you know, it, 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 that's a shared experience mm -hmm. across the entire culture, across the right. entire nation of mm -hmm. America. People's lives are harder, you know, the, the financial pressures are harder than they used to be. Right. Um, and that's a measure, you know, uh, people on the mainland are only beginning to understand mm -hmm. that their, uh, even some of their local governments, mm -hmm. their state governments, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, certainly, and the federal government mm -hmm. certainly, um, is being unduly influenced by corporate money. Right. Wall Street profits are driving the boat. Right. Um, and, you know, that's, as I said, that's been a, an established way of doing business. It's mm -hmm. the standard operating procedure, yep. you know, on, uh, on the state level and mm -hmm. on the Maui County level. Uh, you know, some of those homes that you described that displaced and crowded out mm -hmm. the, 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 the long-standing residents, you know, a, a lot of those homes it, it got exempted from, mm -hmm. there are rules in place, but the county doesn't even follow its own rules. Mm. 
you know, so they 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 do these giveaways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was recently asked to to present to Ellie Cochran's infrastructure committee mm -hmm. an entire presentation. They asked me to talk for 15 minutes. I spoke for 45 mm -hmm. um, on these infrastructure deferral mm -hmm. agreements. You know, well, a deferral is, you know, these are complicated mechanisms, but, you know, a deferral is something that's put off for the future. Mm -hmm. But a deferral that was never intended mm -hmm. to be collected, mm -hmm. that's not a deferral. Right. That's an exemption. Right. It's a different thing. And so they hid from the public mm -hmm. that they were actually doing this. Uh, and it's, you know, it, 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 that's the kind of thing that goes on mm. here in Maui County. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, it, you know, just to go down that rabbit hole for a second, right. um, uh, 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 in fact, uh, Council Member Joanne Johnson, you know, w w it was revealed to her what was going on since 1974, hmm. that, that, that these exemptions were secretly being given away to developers to mm. develop land, shoreline properties, multi-million dollar mm. properties, in places that the community never got any input over what was going on in that location because they just hid the whole process mm -hmm. through the loopholes mm -hmm. in the county uh, uh, land development structure, planning mm. division and, and public works. Mm. And so she, made enough of a stink about it that she was able to finally kill that program that allowed that since 1974. That happened around 2007, I think. No way ever to collect mm -hmm. on all those deferral, deferred agreements mm -hmm. from 1974. That hasn't happened. There's been no collection right. of any of that historic debt. But most interesting to me is that in 2015, a new secret mechanism was created to allow developers to get the same exemptions and giveaways. Hmm. In the upcountry water bill, uh. a, a, a language was slipped in at the last minute, it hmm. seems, into the upcountry water bill and asking the county council members who voted for this bill whether they understand, uh, understood at the time, or even hmm. understand today hmm. that something that was intended for only families on the upcountry water meter wait list hmm. is actually being given away to developers island-wide. And they don't even know that it's happening. The council members voted for it. Mm. They never read the language. That's mm. the only thing that I can think of, mm. is that the council members never actually did their job to read the final language of a bill that was presented to them. And they all voted for it, and none of them know that A and B, for instance, mm. just qualified for a complete roadway exemption on a property, 1,200 acres of, of property that A and B will be developing along Pu'unene and Dairy Road, hmm. from across the church all the way out to the light. Oh, wow. Roadway improvements, when that property gets developed right. and roadway improvements get built to support that development, we, the community, are going to pay yep. for their roads. Yep because it was given away as part of this secret that was added to the upcountry water bill. Mm. So this is the kind of you know, manipulation that goes on on the local level. Mm -hmm. You're running for state. Yep. What do we do there? And how do, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, 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 the, 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 the state, the manipulations on the state level are even more draconian and, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and controlling than the local issues here in Maui County. Right. Um, I try and focus on the local issues here because I, I think there's a chance that we have an, uh, an ability to have some impact over this mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, for instance, you know, we've been inviting the FBI mm. uh, to come in and investigate past administrations for racketeering. Mm. Um, the current administration for, you know, doing essentially what people went to jail for at, in Watergate. Mm. Because we have um, county officials and county attorneys that are lying in court 
to protect the status quo, to protect people that have committed fraud historically since mm -hmm. 1974. Mm -hmm. um, and they're using public money to defend mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. And their acts don't deserve to be defended. Right. Their acts indeed were truly illegal. Right. And they're choosing to defend themselves and the county is footing the bill. Mm. And you can't do that. Right. So that's what people went to jail for, for in Watergate. The only mm -hmm. ones who went to jail mm -hmm. were the lawyers who did that. They mm -hmm. were working for the federal government and they defended themselves using public money. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on here in Maui County. Um, and with any luck, the FBI is, is, is going to investigate this kind of stuff. And we see it as, you know, Maui County mm. is, is this leader, mm -hmm. you know, in, in Hawaii and in the world. Right. You know, where the citizens do, you know, I think it's by nature of our small size mm -hmm. that we do have access to the system mm -hmm. that other communities don't have. There's too many layers in, in other communities to be able to drill down and have mm -hmm. an impact on the system. But we can do that here in Maui mm -hmm. County and that's what this show and that's what my own personal activities have mm -hmm. been geared towards for several years now. And we seem to be having an effect. I know that we're having an effect because there's a lot of people that are pissed off at me. <laughs> That's always a good way to, uh, to, I, to gauge. I, I know I'm doing my job. If I'm pissing some people off, then I know that I'm doing the right thing. Well, and it's more than just pissing people off because it's the actions that happened and occurred in 2014. It's the elections in 2016 that brings me to where I'm sitting now in 2018. Right. It's watching it from afar. So I moved off of Maui in 1995 and moved back in 2016. I was inspired to step in in the beginning of 2015. Mm -hmm. Things were happening and I was living on Oahu with my, my wife and our son and always knowing that I would eventually be back on Maui. Um, when I started to see what was happening, especially with the, the, the momentum, the sheer vibrant energy that was generated in 2014 Yay. and just being like, wow, th this is, I haven't seen this before. This is unprecedented to see these different groups coming together to take a stand for something. And then going into uh, 2015, recognizing that things were happening specifically in relationship to, uh, you know, water rights with East Maui and recognizing since my family comes from Kuali, uh, part of it at least, and mm -hmm. uh, recognizing that there was essentially uh, a spin that was looking to divide communities over this over this issue right. and what was right what was pono was not being honored flashing forward to 2016 watching the elections and really uh, not just myself others as well were really watching the elections and seeing that as the pendulum swings right we talk about the status quo then exactly. we talk about the, uh, the the other end of that spectrum in terms of the progressive movement and right. seeing that what happened in 2014 was not merely a fluke that what had essentially been started was a spark that lit a fuse and that fuse then started to burn and it burned definitely more so in seeing that it was possible right. and the possibility of not merely uh, beginning something but also stepping into a place of decision making and essentially um, empowerment for the community is is real it's viable it's something that's now tangible because people have taken seat right. is why I'm here today and to recognize that as I step in um, you know, really my, my children and my family is what inspires me and to recognize that the decisions that we make now, much like, you know, years back have affected us today. And as you had mentioned, years from now, what is the world that we're going to leave for that next generation? Right. Generations down, you know, 50, 100, 200 years down the line. The, the quality of life, the place itself, those decisions are made now. Yes. And so not just pissing people off, you have also um, brought me here to sit down at this table today. Well, I'm honored uh, to, to, to have you here and, and thrilled that, that you know, anything that we've done over mm -hmm. these past couple of years has fostered uh, the opportunity mm -hmm. you know, for you to, to take office and have an impact mm -hmm. for your community. Um, you know, that's really what it's all about. It is. It is. And the community really, in, in recognizing that it really takes all of us. Right? There's the part that you play, there's the part that I play, there's the part that those who are going for council seats play, there are parts that each and every one of us, much like any sort of ecosystem, right? as we all find whatever that is, as we sit at this round table and we take our seats, um, we find that the table just continues to grow. And so what I'm really finding as I s really start to step 
into all of this and as everything starts to uh, starts to move forward with more velocity uh, and energy is that people are coming forward and it's an amazing thing because that whole concept of community is another reason that I'm here today. You know, the, the Maui that I grew up in, grabbing my bike and riding to the sand dunes in Waihu with my friends, coming back and, you know, checking in with auntie and uncle and all of that is not the Maui that I see today. And there is beneath all of it a general disconnect between at least what I see as, you know, more of the, the old Maui, the people who have been here for a longer period of time, and those who are the new Maui, people who are coming in. And what I'd like to see is, you know, we all, we all live here. It's an island, you know, as you're talking about, it's an island and, and part of what allows for things to happen here on Maui and in Maui County, ground zero for everything that's in this whole process of change and flux, right. um, is done better when we do it together. And so that community concept is, is very important to me as well. Yep, absolutely. Super. Yep. We'll, I'm going to ask you specific questions on, okay. on what objectives you would like mm -hmm. to achieve once you are elected into office. But we're going to do that after this break. There's more to our show in just a moment. This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org. Welcome back to Maui Causes. With me is Michael Tengan, who is running for State Senate District 7. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you for the, 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 the background and perspective of why you're here and why you're running. Um, but let's get into some of the, the specifics. One of the things mm -hmm. that, that uh, you know, is, uh, uh, seems to have risen uh, to the top of the list, other, other than the, the, just the basic notion of home rule, mm -hmm. that we have control over what goes on here in our own community. Mm -hmm. um, but the issues of water and how mm -hmm. water is controlled mm -hmm. and who gets to say Mm -hmm. uh, how the water is controlled. Mm -hmm. um, w w where do you see that going? And what are there changes as mm -hmm. a, uh, a, 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 at the state level that you would help, hope to bring? Yes. Uh, well, first I want to talk about that piece in, in home rule, because I feel that one of the things that happens when we're looking at the level of county and state is that anything that happens in the, at the level of state tends to be very much Honolulu-centric. Right. And so whether we're talking about the decisions that are made uh, specifically what's, for what's happening essentially in urban Honolulu to, you know, the allocation of funds as well. Right. And so one of the things that I really hope to do is to properly represent not just the community, but also to be able to redirect attention to what's happening, not just merely on Maui, because there are other islands as well in terms of the big island, in terms of Kauai. Oh, with so very and so unique forth. and yeah. different needs. Yes, exactly. So how can we... How can we make these decisions based out of urban Honolulu that affect all these different islands in a, a consistent way? And we simply cannot. Right. And so when you talk about things in relationship to home rule, um, I feel that it's, it's critically important because when we centralize these decisions in terms of government, um, disconnected from our communities. Right. And I, I really feel that that's a big part of what tends to happen, particularly those who are representing the interests of big business right. and those other organizations that have uh, alternative and ulterior motives in terms of what happens to our communities. Right. Uh, and some of that, you know, is in place for good reasons. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, uh, the, the structure of our society here mm -hmm. is a little bit different than it is in other places. Right. In part, you know, especially in Maui County, because mm -hmm. this, when, when the governmental structure sort of evolved into what it was, mm -hmm. this really kind of was, you know, a backwoods mentality. Right. There, there, there wasn't capability mm -hmm. uh, to manage large programs. Right. You know, here the, the the talent just wasn't here the experience wasn't right. here to be able to to manage large sums mm -hmm. of money mm -hmm. um, that you know for the hospital system mm -hmm. you know and and for you know uh, uh, all the other all the other systems um, you know so those authorities were given over to the state right. for good reason at right. the time at the time but we're in this transition mm -hmm. Maui County is is maturing into a modern metropolis yes and that's our job mm -hmm. is to shepherd it is yep. to is to 
you know, push it, uh, right. you know, into uh, this modern metropolis. And that means dismantling the old, you mm -hmm. know, uh, guard right. and welcoming in the new. So that, that notion of home rule mm -hmm. um, and wrangling from the state mm -hmm. authority back to the county right. is a very important thing. Yep. Trinette Frittato, also running for county council member mm -hmm. uh, and working as, as uh, 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 Alika Atai's uh, uh, staff, right. legislative staff, uh, uh, since uh, uh, for a year and a half now, um, has a wonderful notion. Mm -hmm. uh, Trinette says that, you know, our tax dollars go to the state mm -hmm. and the state administers the second district court mm -hmm. on to rule over Maui County. Mm -hmm. But they don't really know what's going on in Maui County. Mm -hmm. And there's no real good reason for Maui County to be sending our tax dollars to the right. state to run the court system right. that we have to live with. Right. We can actually find a way to withhold those dollars mm -hmm. from the state and run our own courts. Mm -hmm. if if, then this is the big if, right. if we can demonstrate as a county that we're mature enough mm -hmm. to be able to do the job well. Right. And that's the challenge. Right. That, you know, that's for, for yourself and for all of the candidates, the new blood that's mm -hmm. coming in, that's what we have to demonstrate. We, right. And as a community, we need to give these people the opportunity to do this. Some of them are very well trained. Some of them have been, you know, uh, 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 working towards this goal for many years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in total awe of Keanu Rollins Fernandez. Mm, yep. In total awe. I mean, what a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. You know, at a young age, mm -hmm. you know, d d saw what was going on and said, I'm going to go to school, mm -hmm. I'm going to get as many relevant degrees as I can get, including mm -hmm. a law degree, right. and I'm specifically coming home and running for county council so that I can appropriately represent my community. Yep. My heart just sings, <laughs> you know, to, yes. to, to see her and to, to be able to, to bring, you know, an understanding mm -hmm. to the public that that is a person, she is a person that your children will thank you for putting into office. Absolutely. And that's what I hope for you as well. That's, you know, that's that's why we support stuff like like, you know, like this. Right. So, a home rule, how do, you know, how do how, how do we shift that pendulum and get some of that authority back? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I think uh, and feel a lot of what you just said is highly relevant. It's the maturity of the county that really is going to be able to determine and dictate that. Uh, when we look at things, so we're talking about you know revenue and taxes. I mean, if you just look at the sheer volume of people who come and visit here, um, and the people who pass through at any given day is something like 65, 67 thousand people who are here on Maui County. Right. And if we look at our population, I mean, that's like a third easy of who lives here full time. And yet, the amount of money that's generated from the people who pass, you know, through these islands, is something like 207 million dollars. And what is then given to the state and then comes back to our county is minimal, something yeah. like 14%. Yeah, it's a which, is, which is nothing, right. which is nothing. Where you know, if we're looking then at really seeing the opportunity to show the maturity of this county, then I, I strongly feel that a big part of that is being a fiscally responsible for the monies that pass through, you know, the county itself. Right. And so one of the big things I'd really like to see in terms of the appropriation of cash, uh, the revenue that's generated here, what's taxed by the state, and what's actually upheld here within the county. A larger return in terms of what the, the county receives um, and actually, you know, down the line being in much more uh, control and responsible for those funds in general. When we look at like the transient uh, accommodation tax, for example, um, with the amount of people that are coming here, there is a very real impact upon our infrastructure in terms of the roads, in terms of the resources that are being utilized, sure. which are not being necessarily accounted for in terms of that 14%. And so while I, I definitely feel that that's, one, that's way too many people. 
<laughs> the one that's way too many people at any given moment on this island. But it's only going to get more. It's only going to get more. It's only going to get more. And that really is where seeing more of what is coming in or back from the state is critically important because that 14% can be used for things in terms of looking at, if we're looking at something like that transient accommodation tax, then coming back to the level of county, then how can that be used for things in relationship to housing? If we're going to be looking at um, being able, again, coming back to the, the question of home rule, the maturity of the county and the capacity that it has to operate uh, independent to a certain degree of the state, then uh, you know, there's, certain, there's certain pillars that I think really need to be addressed with that. And so coming back to the level of the state, and this is way off, <laughs> way off from what the, the water question, though, is, right. is relevant. It, it is totally um, relevant. It's all part of the same package. Right, right. It is, absolutely. No, um, I, you're, you're, you're spot on. I, I feel that w that's one of the biggest things, and one of the first things I'd like to see is the reappropriation of funds and coming back to Maui County. Now, having more available in terms of those funds then, though, then comes back to the question that you had raised in terms of the level of corruption. Right, that exists within the county itself. So then one of the things that also comes into that then, whether we're talking about state or whether we're talking about county, is the level of transparency that exists within the government itself. Right. And so you know, one of the things that's happening, and I know that you've been active with the posting in terms of what's happening with our emails at the county level now. Sure. Um, How convenient <laughs> it is to when, as research is going yes. on into past corruption Where did and, all or the, negligence, wow. how convenient Just, it is to purge the email yeah. system of the historical records right. that are necessary and, and could be available otherwise right. for the community to step float forward as whistleblowers yep. to out out uh, the existence of, mm -hmm. uh, of past corruption. Right. I, I think that's a big part of it because it's just, it's, it's dumbfounding to see. And, and yet, w what if there's a system, there are other systems that exist. Right. You know, if you look and, at- And maybe pause here for a second. Yep. It appears that we've had an impact. Yet, I, I, yet, I saw. Yet, yet, yet again, yep. because the June 1st uh, uh, original date mm -hmm. officially has been put back to July 1st, mm -hmm. and there's talk story at the county level, the administrative level, mm -hmm. at the mayoral level to mm -hmm. say, eh, I don't want to necessarily take responsibility for having done that. We're going to pass, right. we're going to delay this until the next administration. Right. And I, I feel like that's, you know, I like to look at what's happening and those things that are problematic and what are the solutions. And so one of the things coming up is if this is a, now a topic on the table, then right. we can now start to talk. I know this is more county than state, though I don't Well, that's I don't the feel skew of this show. I, right, and right, appreciate right. you as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a state candidate. Um, but yeah, if, you know, once I get beyond Beyond the uh, uh, what we can do mm -hmm. here at the county level, the the enormousness of right. the job at the state level, and forget the federal level of having right. any impact anymore. Um, you know, it's daunting. Um, right. So we do tend. I apologize. We do tend well, to focus uh, on I, the county. But I, I appreciate that because I feel that there are definitely a lot of parallels between the two. Yes, and absolutely. And if we can prove it at the level of county, and we can make it work at the level of county. So coming back to home rule, if we can make that work at the level of county then there is absolutely no reason why we cannot at the level of state. Right. And so if we're looking at the management of, of information and, and database management and things of that nature, then um, there are opportunities with that coming back to the level of state where the management of information being much more open and accessible and transparent is also something that I like to see in terms of things like, you know, with emerging technologies, whether we're talking about blockchain, which is essentially an open ledger for all to see, to access at any given point throughout, you know, if it's 50 years back to right now. Um, anyone has that access, because the information can be there, but then having the capacity to access it easily mm -hmm. is another thing entirely. And that's, that, that's a technology that is driving the cryptocurrency movement, but it's also technology that is available for public information access. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're taking that thing and you're, you're saying that we could use the, that blockchain technology to change the transparency of our governments? I've been talking with someone for about the last year and his background is um, with things in relationship to it and its usage in government, essentially. Right, and right. so, absolutely. That's the, the, phenomenal. The, the That's fantastic. The capacity that it has, if you want to find an email that a certain council person or senator had sent off, right, um, right now, it, it's a whole slew that someone needs to go through. Right. 
right. yet through the blockchain technology and other emerging technologies that are like it, um, what's what's capable is that it's essentially an open ledger for anyone to see at any time. Right. To access everything that has been sent off by any person that's in government and to be able to be someone like Joe Blow, you know, chemo on the side, just chilling and he's like, hey, you know what, I want to know about this. Right. Hop on and find it. And find it. And find it. And, and so, find it. And that's, the, and that's the big part of it, is yeah, yeah. being able to find it. And um, the capacity then, when you look at this in terms of the, you know, state government, right? Yeah. As well as county, especially because all of this is happening right now, yeah. is that it's the decentralization of information. Right. And to... Democratization. Yes. Yes. Which is always a difficult thing, yeah. Because you you know you it, it it it's a lot of information. It is you know so it becomes this big thing. You mm -hmm. end up you know having to to uh, um, um, people end up uh, uh, performing the job as cur of curators mm -hmm. to be able to distill all of that information into a packageable mm -hmm. fashion right. so that you can go in and pull what's relevant to a particular issue and literally curate it right. Um, right. To, to, to make it palatable and accessible to the general public. And you know, um, I, my background is in, in psychology, and so sifting through you know clinical studies and research, I, I totally get that. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, as it goes through that process, when someone takes it and processes it, then inevitably it's subject to those biases and prejudices of whoever's doing that. Yes, exactly. And so to be able to have that as well as access to all of the raw data and information, uh, I feel is a great way to one um, keep people who are moving into or who are currently present in politics, whether they're representatives of, you know, I mean, ideally all the way to federal, yet definitely state and county level, to remain accountable to our communities. Right. So and that's, and, and you know, that, that goes right up the chain to, you know, uh, uh, social media mm -hmm. and the influence of foreign governments into our elections mm -hmm. and fake news right. and being able to have the mechanisms. I, you know, in, in, in Facebook, for instance, has started tagging mm -hmm. uh, 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 news items, posts that mm -hmm. come from external sources mm -hmm. with a, a little n note of, you know, the mm -hmm. veracity of of the hmm. the so, the original source of the post, yeah. um, you know those are those are important aspects that as the te the kind of technology that you that you're talking about gets developed, we also have to make sure yes. that get get uh, 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 developed alongside with right. it. Right, absolutely. Yeah. What other issues are, are important to you at the at the state level? Where, where, what other changes do you see making at the state level when once you get elected? <clears throat> Well, you know, there are, so I'm a big ag guy. <laughs> food systems and food policy is, is very important. Um, and recognizing that what has happened in terms of, and especially now, there's a lot that's happening um, on a larger scale, particularly in relationship to Monsanto and it being recently purchased by Bayer, right? Mm -hmm. And looking at how something like this, seemingly that would not have an effect here in Hawaii, will ha absolutely, ha will absolutely will have, have an effect, effect. here yep. in Hawaii. Right. Uh, recognizing that, you know, with our current um, agricultural industry, a lot of it is still of that old school commercial grade agriculture, right? And if you look at how things are done in terms of what are the largest aspects of industry, uh, seed crop, right? And looking at who's developing these, these crops all comes back to certain biotech um, biotech companies who have historically have been no friend to our environment and not to our people at all. And so things happening with recently with the pesticide bill, for example, is, is stellar and there's more work that can be done right. uh, to ensure that our people and our lands are protected right. and to be able to see um, things shift much more in a, a regenerative state. And so one of the big things for me in terms of looking at agriculture is one, to be a uh, a strong av advocate for agriculture versus with the reappropriation um, into developmental lands. Right. And you know, driving past my uh, old Waihu stomping grounds and seeing that house was, was disconcerting to say the least. And yet to recognize that that's nothing new. Again, you that's, know. again, you phrase things. I, 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 I'm working. Phrase things I'm on the working. positive side. I, I want to acknowledge. I, I'm really noticing that yeah. your word choices are always phrased from the positive side, which is a wonderful attribute, and it does uh, it, it, it it does a favor mm -hmm. in some ways, however, to the, the 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 darker forces that are that are at play, mm -hmm. um, because other you know the other word choice is that it's it's ex exploitative, that mm -hmm. it's that you know it it, it it's not. 
a good thing. Right. But I, I, I laud and appreciate the, uh, you know, your personal perspective and how you express yourself because you really do seem to embody a positive approach to things. Well, you know, children, man, they'll change you. <laughs> ah, they are. They, you know, I always heard that once you have a child that everything changes. And I was like, surely not. Not everything. That child was born, man, our son. Uh, and all of a sudden, like, everything became infinitely larger and smaller in one moment. And so I, I definitely am always aware of how I am and am present with what it is that I'm putting out. And so I think really when I step into all of this, um, you know, this is me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a family man, and yet I'm more than that. Yet at the core of who I am, um, being all of these things have really helped me in terms of this transition into politics, which I never thought I would be in. However, um, coming from a nonprofit perspective, so I ran a nonprofit for five years and oh. I still consult with it right now. Uh -huh. And we're looking at things in terms of community commerce um, as well as the development of food based um, businesses. And really, it's building healthy communities by the wellness of the family or the individuals. Mm -hmm. And so, recognizing things that happen, and I'm coming back to your question. I tend to go around. Uh, it's fine. Um, but in recognizing that when there are inconsistencies in terms of what's happening at the grassroots level and what's yeah. happening in terms of government, right. um, when the shift of administration comes in and all of a sudden a whole new list of priorities come into play, one of the opportunities that I see is to be able to be that consistent voice Attempt, you know, pushing things through that are ultimately for the betterment of our community, irrespective of who's at that "quote unquote" helm in right. terms of administration. Right. Um, but and those are the systemic changes that right. that, that need to be in place. Right. That, that that you know, we have an opportunity not only to get candidates that have a perspective of balance, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in in place, but there are so many places where mm -hmm. our exist the structure of our existing mm -hmm. uh, government is mm -hmm. is flawed that mm -hmm. need to be repaired. So that it's not just a two year. Oh, thank God we got somebody right. good in. But that you know, ten. 10 years mm -hmm. from now, 20 years yep. from now, our system is protected from yep. the, the exploitation. Because it could just as easily lead to turn around, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, in, in, and in fact, the state democratic uh, party mm -hmm. just had that, that, that absolute pendulum swing. Yep. Because two years ago, apparently, not a lot of people came out to vote at the Democratic caucus, mm -hmm. and a progressive yep. uh, Democratic chair was elected to that organization organization that began to move that organization mm -hmm. into a whole new realm mm -hmm. and this election that just happened that that chair position was absolutely you know taken over by someone right. who is an active <laughs> lobbyist for right. the pharmaceutical companies for the agrochemical right. companies they're an act so they have taken over mm -hmm. the, the, the 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 party thankfully the vice chair yep. is Gary Hoosier yep. and so here we have this enormous uh, 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 difference differentiation mm -hmm. between the chair and the vice chair of the state Democratic Party. Yep. They couldn't be more diametrically opposed <laughs> to one another. Yep. Um, so it's a fascinating thing to see. Mm -hmm. um, and it begs, you know, it, it does beg, uh, uh, you know, people the understanding, mm -hmm. the call to action mm -hmm. um, of people going out and voting. Um, because they came out to vote. They did. You know, yep. they, the, the, the people that have the entitlements, mm -hmm. um, they realized, oh, our entitlements are being threatened and yep. we need to step forward and we need to go to the polls and turn out at the Democratic uh, Convention and take the Democratic Party back uh, into control mm -hmm. of the, biz the large business right. interests, and they did that. Right. And that's the call to action, you know, here in your local community uh, for you to step forward and to bring your Ohana to the polls and make sure that you vote. The August primaries are e enormously important. Mm. Um, how are you? How are you? Who? who uh, how are you affected in the in the in the primary? Uh, it's 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 all about the primary. It's all about the it's primary. All the, yep, exactly. And so so I, I'm running as a Democrat. And so I'll be running against the incumbent um, August 11th. And so really, 
you know, to hit home the importance of voter turnout. Uh, you know, it's not a sexy election as a presidential election typically is for right. the general. However, nonetheless, a lot can happen in four years as it can in two. Oh, absolutely. And so the opportunity that we have here, much like happened at the, uh, the Democratic Convention, is for all of us to show up in force, right. to be uh, a demonstration of the power, the true power of the people, which right. is our voice. Right. Not just, you know, if you're talking about someone who's just singing by themselves, at, at a karaoke bar and then someone else starts to chime in on that favorite song and all of a sudden the entire area is just one unified voice and that's what I'm hoping to see with our primary election is that up until now we've we, we've we've taken this vehicle as far as it can go you know back in high school I had a this old Mazda 626 it was a piece of junk it was a beach cruiser and I remember driving through the parking lot one day and it just the, the muffler just fell to the ground and just shattered it was done, it was over. I had taken it as far as it could have gone without it blowing up in my face. And before all of this blows up in our face, the opportunity is for all of us with our unified voice to show up August 11th to vote county, to vote state, to get the right people in place right. so that we can not just fix this car that's broken down, we can shift over to an electric. Sweet paradigm shift. To yes, hold. it changed, absolutely. changed the whole thing out. So the August 11th primary is do or die for you as the Democratic candidate because only one Democratic candidate will go through the primaries to the general election. Yes, absolutely. And if people want the kind of change that we've been talking about, then Michael Tengan is the guy that you want to make it through the primary. And the only way to make that happen is for you to vote in the primary. If you need to register to vote, you can still do that mm -hmm. um, and I think you can even still get, uh, register for an absentee ballot if you do that quickly because that process will be closing out if it hasn't already by the time this show airs August 11th is do or die for this community to step up and support candidates like Michael Tengan come and sing karaoke <laughs> with Michael Tengan yes your collective voice is needed let's let's sing together good great thank you Michael so much uh, for you. coming on the show today and for again putting your neck on the block it's not an easy thing to do and it is greatly needed and appreciated by this community join thank us you. again next week on Maui Causes thanks for tuning in and go to MauiCauses.org and check out the other things that we're doing and maybe you know make a donation thank you Aloha This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org.